Welcome to Tomodachi Life, a life sim game that was developed by Nintendo and originally released on the 3DS back in 2013. It's very fun, but uh, I think it can be hard to understand for those who have never played or seen it, so I'll try to provide whatever context I can as we look at easter eggs, fun facts, and memes in Tomodachi Life. So, in this game, you start by naming your island. I went with Windfall just like my Animal Crossing New Horizons island, because the two games are pretty similar in some ways, but then again, not very similar in others. Uh, on that topic, uh, there is actually a clay figure treasure in this game based on real world Haniwa. Those also inspired Animal Crossing gyroids, so uh, that's neat. Anyways, back to the game. Instead of having an island that you help decorate and build populated by pre-made villagers, in this game it's reversed. You create or import Mies, fill out their stats to give them some traits, and then they move into the island's apartment complex. The island's layout and buildings are all fixed, unlocked as you play. For Mies, I started of course by adding myself, the pad, but for the sake of clarity, we'll call him me pad. Mies will have problems that you have to solve. Meepad's first problem was food, so we had to buy him some stuff from the food mart. When it comes to food, as time goes on, you'll eventually figure out which foods your me loves and hates. For the top and bottom two, there are some really fun interactions. So for the second worst food, Meepad can't help but get sick. I'm sorry, man. The second best food produces a rapid fire dance. The worst food uh, will be so bad that Meepad just sort of dissolves. And then once you find and give them their absolute favorite, this happens. Now after solving your Mii's food problem, they'll ask for another villager to join the island. Bonus fun fact, in the Japanese version of the game, your lookalike asks for a friend before food. There's probably a joke that could be made there, but anyways, the first me I added was Nathaniel Bendy, uh, but I made him a bit too short, I'm not really great at making Mii's, my bad. Uh, then I added Chari 5, Swanky Box, and Tendru, and so on. After a rapid fire me making session, I had all of the members of Minus World, a YouTuber group I'm a part of. As more Mii's are added, the island gradually unlocks its building, bringing with it more options and things to do. These milestones are often announced over at the Mii News Tower. The Mii News Tower also has uh, one random newscast each day, which may or may not reflect reality. Windfall Island Police arrested Cherry today. He is suspected of randomly adding hot mustard to innocent foods. According to the police report, Cherry was caught yellow-handed. He added mustard to some paella that Lucy was making. When questioned, Cherry could only mutter, I don't know why I did it. We asked some islanders for their thoughts on the matter. Yes, yes. That's amazing. Um. Thanks for watching. For your 5 o'clock me news, this is Kevin Bro, signing off. With these new buildings, we can spend our hard-earned cash on goods and or services. Occasionally, your islanders can be found working their part-time jobs as cashiers, but otherwise, you'll see a more generic employee named Mr. Tomo, at least in, uh, I believe, Miitopia, um, with a wooden block for a head. Then again, that's only if you're playing in the American version. Mr. Tomo's headwear differs for each version. In the European version, it's a robot head. In the Korean version, Mr. Tomo wears a yellow racing helmet. And then lastly, in the original Japanese version, he has a mask inspired by Kabuki stagehands which wear all black. There is another notable version difference found in the football minigame, where you tap on the bottom screen to push the other Mii's figure down or out of the ring. In the European version, it's called wrestling, and in Japan it's sumo, sporting appropriate figures and mats for both. Switching gears a bit, this is probably obvious, but uh, it takes a long time to gather a comprehensive collection in games like Tomodachi Life, so uh, I wanted to make this video sooner rather than later, so I used a save editor to get all the stuff I needed. 
Um, having done that and said that to you, uh, I was informed that the Islanders of Windfall prepared a special performance at the concert hall to honor this occasion. You didn't draw. You didn't improve. You took a shortcut and did nothing. You experienced a holiday. Nothing was risk. Nothing was gained. It's sad that you don't know. The deserve what true gamers are. Just like shitty pad gamer. Yeah, that, 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 that sounds about right. So, when a me levels up, you can give them a gift. There is a few different types, one of which being songs. Once a particular song genre has been unlocked, that me can perform it over at the concert hall. In the US, EU, and Korean versions, there are eight genres. Ballad, metal, musical, opera, pop, rap, rock and roll, and techno. In the original Japanese version, they didn't have techno or musical, but they did have enka, which is a traditional Japanese style of music. Each genre has a default set of lyrics to go along with it. As an example, this is the pop genre as performed by Petch Toadstool. Of course, you can change the lyrics to whatever you want. As such, many memes have been made with the feature. Here's one I recreated just for this video. <laughs> It's yours, my friend. It's my As long as you have enough rupees. That's the I'm i Back to level up gifts. You can give your Mii certain items, like for example a Nintendo 3DS XL, which you can later see the Mii playing Tomodachi Life on it. <laughs> Let's not think too hard about the implications of the game existing within the game. You could also give them a Wii U, like here I found Swanky Box, Zelda Hyrule, and my cat Lucy playing on the Wii U. Based on the sounds, they're either playing Game & Wario or the Link stage of Nintendo Land. Speaking of gaming, uh, the epic gamer interior is a thing, which I gifted to our resident Mr. Nintendo Drew. It's filled with blurry video game cartridges and memorabilia which you might be able to identify because I'm not gonna bother. I will point out that it cost $1,337 which is pretty elite. Now, one way to save up that much money is with the donations held at the fountain once per day. In the Japanese version of the game, the money is deposited into a white wooden box. In the other versions, it's a glass piggy bank instead. While here, I should mention uh, someone's favorite cringe off rap bottles. These are hosted every day at the fountain around 6 to 7 p.m. I'm a soaring eagle, your baby bird is the best. That's an awfully hot coffee pot. So this event, again, differs depending on region. In the Japanese version, it's a word game called Shiratori, which was localized into word chain for the European version. In that game, each word needs to use the last letter of the previous word. Europe lucked out, having both word chain and rap battle events. Another once a day event is Tomodachi Quest, which is hosted over at the amusement park. It's a fun little coin operated Final Fantasy inspired romp where four of your islanders try to take down a few bosses. The Mii's chosen for the team are random and their personality determines their class so success is sort of random. Some other events that can occur are like a uh, like, like flying disc aka you can throw frisbees around uh, with friends over at the park each morning. Just be careful because it can get a bit intense. Perhaps my favorite is Judgment Bay, which is unlocked after adding 16 Mies to the island. In it, you can draw stuff on the sand, and your villagers will pick one of those. It's basically the 3DS version of a Ouija board. I'm not 100% sure about this. Over the Observation Tower, Quirky Questions lets you do a similar sort of thing, but with fill-in-the-blank questions. It's time for some quirky questions. Who has a giant collection of Mario? Um... 
Who loves Mario? Me. Who thinks they're better than Mario? Me. In the Japanese version of the game, Quirky Questions is hosted on the apartment roof. Actually, in that version, the roof was a whole location, but for whatever reason, it was deemed unsuitable and replaced by the Observation Tower in the other versions. Regardless, enemies are not afraid of heights. In fact, they crave them, as they all save up pocket money that they get in hopes of eventually visiting space. I gifted Meepad 10,000 hard-earned dollars, and this was the spacewalk that ensued. I can finally visit outer space. I'm so high in the sky. Jeez. Earth looks so beautiful from the moon. Jeez. Doesn't Andromeda look awesome? Jeez. Back down to Earth, let's run through a number of references sprinkled throughout the game. On some of the items, you'll see 1889, which is the year Nintendo was originally founded. In the description for the expensive looking vase treasure, it warns against breaking it no matter how tempting it might be. The tunic and leggings outfit is described as being great for going on an adventure, and the elf outfit is a thing. These are all most likely referencing The Legend of Zelda. There are a couple more obvious sounds in the series found in dialogue I wasn't able to record myself, one of them talking about how you should not keep things bottled up except for potions and fairies, the other talks about wanting a new 3DS game, perhaps one with rupees. Of course, the Mario series also gets its own references. The banana peel supposedly makes carts peel out, referencing Mario Kart, and the mushroom will make you grow bigger, referencing Mario's unhealthy addiction. During a pity party, one of the jokes is, why is Luigi taller than Mario, which feels like just a shower thought. Also, uh, hey, the, the frog hat's description states that you might recognize this froggy from one of your favorite video games. This might be referencing Slippy from Star Fox, or maybe Frogger from a nondescript highway, or Big the Cat's best friend. Either way, it's a thing. While sleeping, a me can say do a barrel roll, as well as It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. There's actually a lot of sleep talk dialogue, much of which is very weird. Remember to look both ways before crossing your fingers. Don't open that. You'll destroy us all. Ooh, the creepy crawlies are everywhere. <sighs> this is the real world, so the island was all a dream. The dreams that you can witness are even weirder but beloved all the same. The island's been overrun by carnivorous pork bombs. Deepak, we need your help. By the power of apples. Crusader to the rescue! Remember kids, the only thing to fear is fear itself and also spiders. A fan favorite dream is definitely the ritual shown in a Nintendo Direct featuring a virtual boy as the centerpiece. Now, I don't know if you know this, but the Korean version of the game actually has a different ritual dream in which the Mii's circle around a, another Mii dressed up in spooky robes. While the other versions don't have that dream variant, there's plenty of other dreams that are just as spooky. Hey, Vsauce. Michael here. Skeletons are scary. And spooky. <laughs> well then, um, if your fanfiction island has become unsustainable or you feel like just destroying something, you could always delete your save file. Do you really want to delete your save data? Are you sure about this? Please, don't delete me.
No. Why? I hope we meet again someday. And that's it for the video. I know I didn't cover everything, but either way, thanks for watching. And of course, big thanks to my channel members for the support, with a spacewalk-sized thanks to Pseudonymous, Germanger, Achilles Rhodes, and Captain Crayfish for being super fans. Now, I've made a video on Easter eggs in Wii Sports Resort, which you might find interesting, as well as other videos on other games. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.